evaluate the following trig expressions. First, sine of 5 pi over 4. First step, we'll sketch our angle on the unit circle. So since I have 5 pi over 4, okay, 4 pi over 4 is pi, which is right here. So if I add another pi force, we wind up on this angle here. Now, to get the sign, we want to identify the reference angle and the quadrant. From our picture, we're in quadrant 3. Then we know for the reference angle, that's going to be the angle in quadrant 1, which has the same cosine and sine, but without the minus signs. So it's going to be the same point, which is on this box here. So we're going to be at this point here. That's just going to be pi over 4. Now, pi over 4, we know that has cosine and sine squared of 2 over 2. Okay, the x value in the unit circle can be squared of 2 over 2, which is our cosine. The y value in the unit circle is going to be squared of 2 over 2, which is our sine. Since we're in quadrant 3, we've got to figure out how to put in plus and minus signs. So to do that, we use the cast method. So what do you do? You take your letters, you start in quadrant 4, go counterclockwise. So C-A-S-T. Now what those letters stand for, Okay, of cosine, sine, or tangent, the letter's going to tell you which of those functions is positive in your quadrant. So in our case, what do we have? We're in quadrant three, so tangent's going to be positive, cosine and sine are going to be negative. We're looking for the sine, so we know we have a minus sign. Now, putting together what we have, our reference angle gives us square root of two over two. The CAS method, or quadrant, is going to give us a minus sign. So our answer is going to be minus square root of 2 over 2. Now to check, that's going to be the y value in the unit circle for 5 pi over 4. Our point's right here, so its y value is definitely going to be negative. So that checks out. Okay, next we have secant of pi. Now, the idea is going to be, typically you don't memorize secant or tangent off the top of your head. Okay, you want to put this in terms of sine and cosine. So secant is going to be 1 over cosine, so we're looking at 1 over cosine of pi. So I'm going to need to know what cosine of pi is. Now, the cosine is going to be the x value in the unit circle. So if I plot the angle pi, we wind up back here, and then that x value is going to be a minus 1. So we stick in our minus 1, and then our answer is just going to be a minus 1. Finally, we have cotangent of minus 30 degrees. Again, this is typically not one we memorize, so we write in terms of sine and cosine. So here I'll have cosine of minus 30 degrees over sine of minus 30 degrees. Okay, we want the reference angle in the quadrant for minus 30 degrees, so we plot our point on the unit circle. So it's gonna be right here, so we're in quadrant four. Now also note, okay, for our reference angle, we're just gonna fill in the box here. This point goes up to 30 degrees, which is the same as pi over 6. Now, quadrant 4, okay, we use our cast method, and we're in the quadrant for C. So cosine's positive, sine and tangent are negative. So for cotangent, we're going to have cosine over sine. So if positive over negative gives me a negative. The check on that, note that cotangent's 1 over tangent. Tangent's negative, so again, we get a negative out. So we're definitely going to use the minus sign. Now, we just need to know cosine and sine for our reference angle. So it's pi over 6. Now, a couple ways to get this. Note, if I compare pi over 6 and pi thirds, okay, they both get cosine and sine of square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. Just have to remember which goes with which. Now, cosine is going to be the x value in the unit circle. Pi over 6 is shorter than pi thirds. So pi six is a bigger cosine. Now if you compare a half and square root of 3 over 2, square root of 3 over 2 is roughly 0.87. So the cosine for pi over 6 is going to be square root of 3 over 2. That's going to mean your sine is going to be 1 half, and then you're going to have cotangent of your minus 30 degrees. Okay, what's going to happen? We know we have a minus sign. Okay, the cosine and sine are going to be square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. I multiply top and bottom by 2 over 2, it's going to give me a minus square root of 3. Okay, 
another way just to check our work. Okay, another way to get your cosine and sine for your pi 6 or your 30 degrees, you could draw 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Now you want to draw this as best as you can because you want to be able to tell apart your 30 degrees from your 60 degrees. And then the way you fill things in, the short side is going to have length 1, hypotenuse has length 2, then the other side has length square root of 3. Okay, and then the Pythagorean theorem checks out. Now, if I want cosine of pi over 6, or 30 degrees, what do we do? Okay, we're here, we want the cosine, so that's adjacent over hypotenuse, gives me square root of 3 over 2. For the sine, we have opposite over hypotenuse, gives me my 1 half. Now, if you really want to go straight to it, cotangent, because it's 1 over tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, we want adjacent over opposite, so our adjacent is going to be square root of 3, our opposite is going to be 1, so we get a square root of 3, and then our quadrant gives us the minus sign. So that's going to check our work.